Ben Bernanke and the Federal Reserve's Open Market Committee had a lot to say this week, and to put it mildly, it caught the market's attention. What was the message and what was the meaning? Joining me right now, Bob McTeer, former president of the Dallas Federal Reserve, and Keith Banks, president of U.S. Trust. Gentlemen, good to have you on the program. Great Thanks so much for joining us. Bob, let me kick this off with you. Everybody was watching and listening to uh, Ben Bernanke's testimony before Congress this week. And separately, the Federal Reserve minutes that were released this week. Now, the minutes or, you know, the notes from the last meeting seem to say that the tapering of the Fed's bond buying program could begin as early as June. But then Bernanke said it all depends on the data. What do you think? I doubt that it'll start in June. Uh, remember that the uh, minutes reflect a debate that's going on. And it's easy for the participants in that debate to forget that there's going to be accounting come come three weeks later. Also, the word participants includes, I assume, non-voters as well as voters. I think when it comes right down to it, Mr. Bernanke will have all the governors with him and, and most of the president. So what, when would you expect the Federal Reserve to slow up on the stimulus? Oh, probably around September. September of this year. Uh, yeah, I don't think it'll be dramatic. I think they might say, well, let's go with 50 50 billion dollars of long-term treasuries and drop off the mortgage-backed securities. So Keith, you know, that's obviously what the market's waiting for, right, you know, right. and, and and so skittish. The, the one mention or suggestion that the Fed is going to stop the stimulus turns this market into, you know, a massive sell-off. What do you think is happening? What should investors be thinking about here? A, a couple of things, Maria. Number one, I think people are misunderstanding what the process will look like and actually be when the Fed does begin the tapering and ultimately type, uh, tightening. People think it's an on-off switch. It's a dimmer switch. It'll probably be four or five steps before you actually see rates rising. So number one, it'll be much more protracted versus, again, on-off. That's number one. Number two, you know, people are people are waiting for a big pullback in the equity markets to move into, move cash or move fixed income. They're not getting them. It's been shallow, it's been short, so it's been a trickle. And as a result, people are kind of caught in the middle and not doing what we think they should be doing, which is increasing their weighting in equities. So, so what are you seeing in terms of your clients right now? Are they cautious? Are they putting money in cash? Are they keeping money in fixed income? Right. How, do you, how would you break it down? We've got about, our clients have about 10% of their assets in cash currently, so that's down. They still have a fairly big exposure to fixed income, and we're continuing to try to get them to shift, especially their fixed income holdings, into, into equities, because we believe that we are still in the early to mid phases of a secular bull market that we think it, by 2015, you could be somewhere in the 15, you know, in the, the 1950 range for the S&P 500, so well above where we are even today. I mean, d just that last week, I, I spoke with the CEO of Credit Suisse, and he was telling me about his private bank, and he told me, that this is Brady Dugan, CEO of Credit Suisse, he said 30% of his clients right now uh, are still in cash. Listen to this. I'd like to get your reaction. Yes, they still have a significant percentage in cash. So we've seen some of that move into equities. Um, we've seen them maintaining their uh, allocations to fixed income, actually. So I think that there is still room for money to flow into the equity markets, which I think, you know, gives you the view that perhaps uh, the market certainly has further run. Keith, your company just released a survey that showed similar results um, for wealthy clients uh, that they are actually also cautious. So what does that tell you in, in terms of uh, the potential for the market? It's interesting. On one hand, the survey, and these are non-U.S. trust clients, were saying they're optimistic about today and the future. And that, they, and they also said that they were trying, their, their focus was now more on growth of assets, not preservation. But on the other hand, the disconnect was to the point you're making, 56% said they had a lot of cash still on the sidelines with no immediate intention to move it. So I think people are still very slow to translate feeling better about things, the economy, employment, and others, and translating it the way they ultimately need to with respect to the asset allocation they're actually undertaking. Bob, what can you tell us about the economy right now? I mean, housing seems strong. The autos are picking up. Where are we in terms of the economic recovery in your, in your view? I think it's, uh, it's picking up some some strength, but it sure is halting. You know, you, you get a plus one uh, tenth uh, increase in retail sales and th people think that's great because it didn't go down. And then you lose a uh, half percentage point on industrial production and nobody seems bothered. 
I think the economy is improving, but I don't think it's improving enough uh, to re- the the positive mood out there. Uh, I think is based more on what's been happening to the stock market than what's been happening to the economy. Does that bother you, Keith? The fact that you know this rally is largely based on the Federal Reserve's easy easy money policies and not necessarily all on fundamentals. Well, or do you think that's wrong? I, I don't think it's totally wrong. I, I think there's no question that liquidity was a big catalyst for a, a, a big part of the move in the markets. But let's not forget, earnings this year we think will be $108 a share. That's another record for the S&P, for the, uh, a record year of earnings. We think next year there'll be 112, 114. So there's still a fundamental underpinning in addition to the liquidity, and that's part of what we think people are forgetting. So um, even though Bob's right, I mean, the economy has been tepid, you know, 2 percent growth and 7.5 and percent unemployment doesn't get you real excited. But given how much companies have streamlined, it's still translating into record profits and record levels of cash. People also forget, Maria, companies have $1.5 trillion of cash on their balance sheets, which we think they're going to start to or continue to increase dividends, continue to buy back stock. We think M&A activity will pick up significantly, and that will ultimately allow them to hire more people and put more money into capital spending, all of which is good, all of which is positive for the equity market. That's great conversation. Gentlemen, thank Thank you you. very much. We so appreciate it. Bob McTeer, Keith Banks joining us today.